welcome to lecture number 8 on mechanisms uh, when you are driving a car the normal thing that we want to do is to take either a left turn or right turn based on our convenience there is a mechanism that is in the car which helps us to take right turn and left turn effectively and we call that as the steering gear mechanism and today we will try to study one such kind of a steering gear mechanism so a steering gear mechanism they are used in variety of automobiles for varying the direction of two or more of the wheel axis axles so that to cause the automobile to move in any desired path either my i may be wanting to move straight i may want to take a left turn or i may want to take a right turn right so usually it is done by means of front wheels as the real wheels are mounted on a common axles which is in a fixed direction or they are locked so that the steering should be done only with the help of the two front wheels right which are mounted on something called as stub wheels right so action of the rotate the action of turning the rotation axis of the wheels is known as steering the how you turn the rotation axis the or the action of turning the rotation axis of the front wheels usually is called as steering and the mechanism used for that purpose is called as the steering gear mechanisms and one thing that has to be kept in mind is the relative motion between the wheel and the road surface should be pure rolling right so this is essential to prevent the wear of tires if there is no pure rolling that indicates that there will be skidding of tire which leads to rapid wear of tires tires that means that instead of going up to 30000 or 40000 your tires tires will wear out at either 15000 or 20000 kilometers only so that is how we are going to see the importance or prominence of a steering gear mechanism right so going ahead the rolling motion of wheels on the road surface is possible only if they describe concentric circles on the road we know right when i am moving when i take a right turn the right wheel will act as a inner wheel and the left wheel will act as a outer wheel right so right wheel will turn only by a smaller amount and the left wheel will turn by a larger radius right so one thing that we have to remember is so this is the path taken up by the inner wheel and this is the path taken up by the outer wheel when i am trying to take the right turn right so this will act as the inner wheel which turns only by a smaller amount so this will act as a outer wheel so when my objective or when my desire is to take a right turn and they should be concentric they should share the same center right they are not going to turn at the same radius but they should be concentric right so we have two kinds of steering gear mechanisms that are involved usually uh, uh, usually used in the vehicles they are called as ackerman steering gear mechanism and davis steering gear mechanism right so in this lecture we will only focus on the ackerman steering gear mechanism but anyhow we will come to know what is the disadvantage of a davis steering gear mechanism right so before going into the ackerman steering gear mechanism we need to know something called as the fundamental or correct equation for steering the steering gear mechanism which qualifies or which fulfills this fundamental or correct equation of steering only will give us the satisfactory steering experience right so let me consider a vehicular arrangement like this where this ae and this bf sorry sorry this bf i am going to call it as ae and bf i am going to call them as stub axles or short axles on which the two front wheels e and f are mounted right so a and b are called as the pivot points on the chassis or the axles on the front axles right so e will be my outer front wheel right so this will be e which will be my outer front wheel because i am trying to take a right turn when i am taking a right turn the wheel which is away from the right side will be called as the outer front wheel and f in this case this is called as f will be the inner front wheel right because it is towards the right side and we have something called as i right so if at a particular angle i am trying to take a turn i am trying to take a right turn if i project the right if i project the instantaneous center of the outer front wheel and the inner front wheel they meet at a point and they lay exactly on the axis of the rear wheels right so that i am going to call it as the instantaneous center of the front wheels e and f 
right for the proper steering or the for the steering to be correct the instantaneous center of the two front wheels e and f right should meet at point i and point i should lay on the axis of the rear wheel only then we are going to get the correct steering right so now we will take this equation so or let me call right let me say that inclination of the inner front wheel with respect to the horizontal let me call it as theta and inclination of the outer front wheel with respect to the horizontal or with respect to the axis let me call it as phi right and we have something called as a here which is nothing but the axle distance and we have something called as b which is nothing but the wheel base right so distance between the pivots of axles a is a pivot b is a pivot the distance between a and b is what i am going to call it as a and b is called as the wheel base distance from center of one wheel to center of the rear wheel is what i am going to call it as small b which is the wheel base right theta and phi are the angle turned by the inner wheel and the outer wheel during my turning right i want to take i wanted to take a right turn when i took a right turn right so the inner wheel has turned by an amount theta and the outer wheel has turned by an amount phi right but for this case when i take a right turn phi right i should remember that phi should be greater than theta the angle of the outer wheel should be angle turned by the outer wheel should be greater than the angle turned by the inner wheel right so from the figure i want to show the equation for the correct steering I, I want to know the fundamental equation for correct steering. So for that, I am going to write what is cot theta and cot phi. And based on that, we shall try to establish the fundamental equation. Right? So let me try to say what is cot theta. So I have theta here. I know tan theta is opposite by adjacent. So correspondingly, cot theta will be adjacent divided by the opposite. Right? So this is the angle. So adjacent is nothing but BG and the opposite is nothing but IG which is also called as B here. So this is the adjacent side and this will be the opposite side for, for me to define what is cot theta. So similarly to define cot phi that is phi is nothing but angle turned by the outer wheel. So this is what I phi have. So if I want to take phi adjacent will be AG. Right, AG can be further split as AB plus BG. That is what we have written here. Right, and correspondingly, the opposite side again will be IG only. Right, so AB by IG plus BG by IG. I know that AB by IG, AB is nothing but A. Right, IG is nothing but B. BG by IG, I know that it is nothing but cot theta. So if you rearrange this expression, cot theta will be e cot phi will be equal to a divided by b plus cot theta right if you rearrange that cot phi minus cot theta will be equal to a by b this is what we know as the fundamental equation for the correct steering so any steering gear mechanism which satisfy this equation we say that right that is the fund that satisfies the fundamental equation we say that that is a steering gear mechanism and they result in less wear and tear of the tires Right. So here it is very simple. If I know the value of phi and theta, they are the dynamic angles, right? The through which they are going to turn when they are taking a left turn or the right turn, right? So at a particular point, if I know the value of theta and phi, right? So then cot phi minus cot theta should be equal to the ratio of distance between the pivot of axles and the wheel base. So the right hand side will always be a constant, and the left hand side keeps changing, right? So for all angles, if they are, if LHS and RHS is equal, we say that that is an ideal steering gear mechanism. Only for particular value of theta and phi, if they become equal to A by B, we still call it as a steering gear mechanism with certain reservations. Right? So now, if the condition is satisfied, we say that there will be no lateral slip or there will be no skid of the wheels when the vehicle is going to take a turn. Right? That is a positive sense through, that is what we intend from the fundamental equation right now let us take up the first steering first example of the steering gear mechanism that is the ackerman steering gear mechanism right so the ackerman steering gear mechanism is something like this so ae and bf are the stub axles right so it is nothing but a four bar linkage abcd is a four bar link right so now we have something we have two links ab and dc which are parallel to equal each other right ad and bc right are equal in length and they are inclined with inclined by an angle phi 
right so they are pivot the entire mechanism is pivoted at a right and it is connected this link is connected to the two front wheels right that is e and f through the point a so let me say d a e is one bell crank lever the bell crank lever looks like this so this is a bell crank bell crank lever right similarly we have one more bell crank lever that is c b and f right so this is one more bell crank lever right so they form two bell crank bell crank levers which are in which are pivoted at point a and b c d is called as a crank pin right which is parallel to ab but ab and bc are not of equal length ad and bc will be of equal length inclined at equal angles phi with respect to the chassis of the vehicle but whereas ab and dc will not be of equal length right so if i extend ad and bc they are going to meet at point i which is nothing but the instantaneous center of the steering gear when the vehicle is moving straight observe that i may meet at the rear axle or may not meet at the rear axle if they meet at the rear axis we say that it is an ideal steering gear mechanism and satisfy the fundamental equation if it still does not meet it is okay we still call it as a steering gear mechanism but not ideally right so now let me assume that the vehicle has taken a right turn right so now for the inner wheel the angle alpha keeps on increasing and for the outer wheel angle alpha keeps decreasing with respect to the axis right so now theta indicates the angle turned by the inner wheel and phi indicates the angle turned by the outer wheel when the vehicle is taking a right turn right so in the earlier case when they were moving exactly straight e and f were parallel to the rear axle now that it has taken a turn now e has taken a new position e dash and f which was earlier horizontal has taken a new position f dash at that instant right if i produce the center if i produce the or if i extend right the center of rotation they are going to meet at a point called as i and that will be the instantaneous center of rotation of the two front wheels right at new position e dash and f dash what we have to observe here is that the instantaneous center right or when when we produce the center of rotation of the two front wheels right they meet at point i and the point i does not lie on the axis of the rear wheel right but instead it lies at a distance point 3 times b let me say if b is 100 mm right so point 3 into 100 it will be 30 it will be lying at a distance of 30 mm from the real axle and distance from here to here will be 70 that is a meaning right so ackerman steering gear mechanism is not a ideal steering gear mechanism because when uh, when i am going to take a right turn if i extend the center of rotation of the two front wheels e dash and f dash they are going to meet at point i and the point i does not lie on the axis of the rear wheel but instead it lies at a distance point 3 times b right from the axis of the rear wheels right that is what we have to remember in case of the ackerman now we will go ahead we will take the same diagram and we will go ahead so what we have to remember is e dash is a new change position of the outer front wheel f dash is the angle to, is the new position of the inner front wheel c dash and d dash or the is the new position right of the bell crank levers right now what happens when the vehicle moves straight when the vehicle when the during the straight motion of the vehicle the gear is in the mid position as usual with equal inclination of the arm ad and bc with respect to ab right so the cross link dc is parallel to ab in this position so this is exactly what we studied in the first case right the actual ackerman steering gear mechanism when the vehicle is moving in the forward direction without taking any turn now when the vehicle wants to take a right turn the value of alpha for the link bc dash increases and decreases for ad that is what we know that we are talking about alpha right so alpha is this right so now the angle turned by the outer wheel is called as phi and the angle turned by the inner wheel is called as theta right so obviously the outer wheel will take more turn when compared to the inner wheel right so the value of phi for a given value of theta depends on the ratio that is ab divided by ad right and also the angle phi that was set initially right whatever the angle phi that you are alpha that you are going to set initially for a given automobile the dimensions of the various links and angles 
and angle phi will be known right so i will be knowing ab i will be knowing ad dc cb etc everything will be known alpha will be known right and theta will also be known to me all right i say that i th i can know or i can measure theta so value of the outer turning angle phi is what i am supposed to find actually right by drawing the mechanism to certain scale for certain value of inner turning angle theta so let me say theta when when theta turns by 10 degree what will be the corresponding position of phi when theta turns by 20 degree what will be the corresponding position of phi either we can do it by analytical method or by graphical method by drawing the ackerman mechanism to the actual scale right when you do that when you know the value of phi and when you know the value of theta for a particular value of theta i assume the value of theta for that particular value of theta what is the value of phi Right? you can determine accordingly right so now the fundamental equation of steering says that cot phi minus cot theta should be equal to a by b right i know the value of a and i know the value of b at any given instant a and b does not change right usually the ratio of a by b will be from 0.4 to 0.5 and we can usually consider it as 0.455 right that is a standard that most of the most of the people will consider right so the value of cot phi minus cot theta Right, which equals 0.45 corresponds to the only position when the steering is correct. Right. So for a particular value of theta, right, I get a particular value of phi. Right. Only for a one value of theta and phi, they become equal to 0.455. Only for that position, right, the steering will be correct. Right. So now there are three values of angle theta which give correct steering of an automobile. What are they? Once when the vehicle is moving straight without taking any turn, when theta is equal to zero, when vehicle moves at a correct angle to the right side, what is the correct angle? Most of the time we find that for the cars, right, with certain uh, standard dimension, right, theta has been found to be approximately equal to 24 degree. So you can find the corresponding value of phi by constructing the mechanism to the scale, right. So when theta is approximately equal to 24 degree, we get cot phi minus cot theta equal to 0.455. That is when the steering will be correct. So the mirror image, so exactly to the left side, when the vehicle takes a turn to the left side, again approximately theta is found to be 24 degree. These are the only three position when the steering will be correct. When it is moving straight, when it is at a correct angle to the right and when it is at a correct angle to the left. Right? That correct angle varies from vehicle to vehicle. It, it also depends on the dimensions that you have chosen and the angle alpha that is set by the vehicle manufacturers. So again, in all other position, pure rolling is not at all possible due to slipping of the wheel and the fundamental equation. And because they they do they do not do the pure rolling because the fundamental equation of the steering is not satisfied. In an Ackermann steering gear mechanism, it is found that the instantaneous center I right it do not lie on the axis of the rear wheel as we have discussed already, but it will lie at a distance approximately. 0.3 into b above the axis of the rear wheel right so it indicates that right the ackerman steering gear mechanism is not an ideal steering gear mechanism and it does not satisfy the fundamental equation of steering right the instantaneous center i do not lie on the axis of the rear wheel in order that that the value of theta will be very small right you are taking a right turn right so theta this value of theta will be very very small so that it won't be you cannot extend it Right? Uh, it cannot move to the right side, It cannot you cannot extend so that it is going to meet on the axis of the rear wheel. Right? So for larger values of theta, when the vehicle is taking a sharp turn, right, the wear of the tire will be more on account of slipping. So this will definitely, there will be more wear and, wear, wear and tear of tires and it reduces the life of tires. How to reduce it? Right? If you, however, to negotiate terms, uh, the sharp turns, the speed of the vehicle must be slowed down. Most of us will do that. Right? Whenever we want to take a sharp turn, we reduce the speed of the vehicle and the moment you reduce, right, there will be less wear and tear of the tires. Right? Thus, value of alpha or value of theta or phi does not much affect the life of tires. That is one of the reasons why Ackermann steering air mechanism, though it does not satisfy the fundamental equation, it is still being employed. So we can just go through few examples, right? So this is an Ackermann steering gear mechanism in the normal position when the vehicle wants to move forward. So when the vehicle takes a turn, right? That is what you can observe here when the vehicle takes a turn. So in this case also they are taking a right turn, right? Or if you extend, right? The instant if you extend the 
center of rotation of the two front wheels they are not going to meet at the axis of the rear wheel instead it will be 0.3 times the wheel base that is what we have to remember so this is a physical demonstration of the ackermann steering gear mechanism you can observe the four bar linkage right so they involve only turning pairs there are no sliding pairs here that is one thing you can appreciate with respect to ackermann steering gear mechanism and this is one more demonstration that you can see with respect to the ackermann steering gear so there are only turning pairs here red and red are turning pair these two are again turning pairs so it provide it is an easiest method for turning the vehicles using a mechanism so this is one more that you can observe it is as simple as that it is just a four bar mechanism with four revolute pairs or four turning pairs right what are the advantages of ackermann steering gear the whole mechanism is located on the rear of the front wheels if you observe here carefully they are located if this is the front wheels right it is located on the rear of the front wheel this is the front axle right so it is located right uh, it is located on the rear not on the front so it saves much time it saves much of the space for me and it contains only turning pairs and there are no sliding pairs there is one more mechanism called as davis steering gear mechanism which contains two sliding pairs so there will be even though it satisfies the fundamental equation right even though you reduce the speed there will be more wear and tear right uh, involved other uh, in, in comparison to the ackermann steering wheel right so thus ackermann steering geometry is commonly used in automobile because of the two advantages one is there is no extra space required it is located in the rear of the front axle another one is it involves only turning pairs so there will be very less wear and tear when compared to the other steering gear mechanism that is available that is the davis steering gear mechanism so that's the end of lecture 8 thank you